Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. And in today's video, we're gonna show you some more tips and tricks to catching kingfish, as well as how we get bait when it's really tough. As you might have seen in some of our videos, bait has been really tough this year. The kingfish bite has been great, but bait has been hard to get. We come out of the inlet in the morning and we head south to look at some spots where they caught them the day before. But when we get out there, we're not seeing any good sign. Normally, pogies will flip at the top, but we're not seeing nothing. Okay, it's really windy. Uh, it's kind of hard to see if anything is flipping. And I'm hearing reports from boats that went north and further south that they're not seeing anything. So that's not good. We're thinking about going offshore to jig bait, but finally we hear that a boat a couple hundred yards from us on the radio caught some bait. And he caught them down deep. Yeah, I'm marking them real good now. They were about 10, 15 feet, you know, in depth, not quite to the bottom, but. Right, we should be, we're coming into the area now. All right, like right there is where I'm working. Ready? Yeah. You see, we're in about 20 to 22 feet of water and we're starting to mark some bait. Okay, now this makes catching bait difficult. Normally catching pogies is nice. You know, they're right up on the surface, big pod, throw your net, one and done. You're out catching bait in like 10 minutes. But today, not so much. All right, in, yeah. They're right on the bottom too. Hey Chad, come on back out here. We got 30 on that one, Jeremy. I'm gonna jump in behind you there and uh, save a butt you. This bait is kind of scattered and it's moving. So when you mark it on your depth recorder, you gotta be ready to throw. And when you throw, you could still miss them completely. Because, you know, if someone's throwing at the front, you're at the back, and it takes time for your net to sink that deep. And if you're not letting it sink that deep, you know, then you're not gonna get many fish. Also, this is really good to have a bigger net. Because remember, as your net sinks, it gets smaller. So we have a big, you know, 10 foot net, you know, it gives us a better chance of hitting that moving pot of baits. It took us an hour to get bait, at least, maybe a little more. And um, we thought about maybe going offshore to jig bait, but with it being so windy and rough, we thought that'd be difficult to spot too. So we kind of worked it out there catching pogies. Now we got about 31 baits, and 30 of those baits came on one cast. So that means most of our casts were blanks. We didn't catch nothing. Not one, but look at it. I don't think that's all reverse there, but it might not be pokey, but let's go if we want. Only got about 30 baits. I don't think we'll catch more than 30 fish. That's if we catch a fish on the bait. Yeah. Look. Now generally we like to have a lot more baits than that because we'll do some live chum in and we'll have plenty of extras. But as hard as it was to get bait that day and as good as the kingfish bite was anyways, I was like, well, you know, let's just go with 30. You ready? Yeah. Let's go get some fish. <laughs> the bait ain't here. Well, yeah. we did all right. We got 30 baits, but it was, it was tough. Big okay. baits though. Well, right. They are really deep, right on the bottom. Tough to get. We got 32 baits. Um, but hey, I don't think we're gonna catch more than 32 fish. We have to stop at 32. Well, we get four, we've achieved the goal. Four kings. <laughs> it's windy, it's gonna be choppy. We're gonna take our time to get out there and uh, we'll see what we can do. So stay tuned ride, guys. Ride them waves, baby, ride them waves. Finally get to the spot and we're about a mile north of where we had been the last few weeks. Now this is all the same general area but it's a little bit different. And uh, I heard they were catching some to the north and part of me just wants to know 
as this school of kingfish all over the place, or are they really that tight on one spot? We get the baits out, and today we use a couple of little tricks to help catch kingfish. The first one is we use skirts on our rigs. Skirts are just little, um, you know, rubber things, kind of like a big offshore skirt, only much smaller, maybe an eighth or quarter ounce weight. Could be like shiny mylar, it could be a little rubber stuff like a CNH duster, something like that. Normally, if you're using live bait, you want to keep it all natural, let the bait do its thing. But putting the skirt on, even though it might seem kind of weird and you want to make sense how it would help, in this case it did. I mean, our first two fish came off of that and we had other strikes as well. I don't know if maybe it just made it look different, right? I mean, maybe everyone else is trolling natural baits and you know the kingfish get tired of seeing that. They learn that trick and they're like, oh, this is different. They want to bite it. Maybe they're curious. You know, I, I don't know. But it helped catch fish. The spot's uh, doing pretty good. Okay. I know. I, uh, we might have a. Okay. I thought I heard that one might click too. Might have got hit. Yeah, you want to grab that one and I'll, uh, I'll check this one? Yeah. Is he a gaffer? Uh, I like the one you got about. Let me stick him. Hey, you go ahead, let me uh, clear this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Was that our mono? Yeah. Our first loss, yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Uh, right behind me. You wait. No, that one's fine. It's the other. Uh, it's the eight pound. So you, you need to come under me. got him in the mouth so what I would suggest is to always maybe try you know a skirt on your rig I mean when you start the morning off and you set up your spread think of it like a buffet you put baits in different spots different distance back different depths you want to work a broad range and you might try different types of baits or baits with skirts double baits single baits things like that when you notice a pattern like everyone's eating steak today, or maybe everyone's hitting, every fish is hitting the downrigger at 30 feet, or every fish is hitting my skirted lures, well, that's when you start pouring out, you know, more steak, or in our case, more skirted lures, or maybe more fish down deep, you know, more baits down deep, 
you kind of hone in on that pattern. In the same way, on your GPS, if you're in one spot where you catch all the bites, catch all the bites, catch all the fish, then stay tight to that area until you stop catching fish. So that was the first trick. The second one, get ready, this is gonna blow your mind, is I was using a little rig I invented for myself called the Double Pogey Mono Leader. It's basically where I have my stinger hook, which goes to another hook, and that goes to another hook, okay? The first two hooks hook to uh, each bait, and that last hook dangles behind the last bait. Now this section is rigged with wire or seven strand. I prefer seven strand. And the rest of it, whereas normally it would be 18 inches or maybe three feet of wire to protect against the kingfish's sharp teeth, I will instead just tie it right off to 30 pound mono or flora or whatever you got. This is riskier, but I've caught a lot of fish doing this. I mean, surprisingly, I thought at first when I tried it, these fish are gonna be cutting me off left and right, but they didn't. I caught most of the fish and it has that stealth advantage because the last few weeks, the water's been very clear out there. Now the fish has still been biting well on other rigs, but sometimes it helps, you know, you put that stealth one out, maybe you get a bigger one to hit. Maybe you get that sailfish that's in the area. Dang. Whoa, what was that? Dang. I, I think this line's over me. One of these. Uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, I don't know. I gotta realize it's gonna get loose. He's back to the right. Uh, kingfish? He's a little bit better one. Um, I can probably bring it in if you want. There we go. Not a bad one. So, you know, the fish were still biting all over that area, and me and the another boat out there as well, and we were both catching lots of fish, so it was a good spot. 30 feet was doing well for us, um, but really all over the fish were hitting, and we, we hold on on this tight area that seemed to really hold fish the best. There you go. Take it if I get it. it might have been a snapper on there, you know? Yeah. Well, that other one didn't seem, uh... There we go. probably did it out of it when I was... Yeah. That hand was just flashed? Yeah. Kingfish? Yeah. Good one? Uh, he's pretty decent. Hope you guys learned some cool tricks and tips. Maybe give them a try, you know, especially if the bite's really hot in your area. That's a good time to experiment because you're not worried about not catching fish. I mean, if it doesn't work and you lose a few, well, it's okay because they're biting well. And when you do get comfortable with them, they may really pay off and the bite's tough. You know, you may need that mono rig or 
you know, you may want to have a skirt on. It may pay off big for you when times are tough. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and find us on our other social media pages. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.